Hello everyone and welcome to the Mizu Basa Bridge competition. My name is Hani Salim. I'm a professor in civil engineering at the University of Missouri. This video will describe basics on bridge design and will also give you a step-by-step -step process for how you can uh, arrive at the final design that you will use for constructing your bridge for the competition. There's another video uh, that describes how you use the software for arriving at your final design. Make sure you watch that video too. In this presentation, I will briefly describe different bridge structures and their components. I will talk about bridge design fundamentals again very briefly and describe the computer software. Once again, there's another video that describes in detail the computer software, but I'll introduce uh, it here also and use that to move into the construction uh, aspects of your bridge or the model bridge. As you all know, a bridge is a structure that spans a divide, and this divide could be over a stream or a river, it could be over a railroad track, it could be over another bridge, or it could be over a highway. Normally, bridges carry traffic, such as pedestrian, uh, bicycles, could be vehicular or railroads, or it could be a combination of all of that. The simplest form of a bridge is that you need to span between two points. In this case, an abutment could be a side of a mountain and abutment on the other side. The simplest form is that you have a deck. You must have always a deck where the traffic or the vehicles, the trucks would drive on. This deck, if your span, if your total span is too long, then you can add piers to cut the span into smaller spans to be able to support the traffic. For our competition, there are no piers. Your bridge is going to be simply supported between two points. Um, to do that, you're not going to be able to do it by just a deck. Then we must move into other types of bridges. I'll introduce the different types, but uh, our focus will be on truss bridges. There are girder bridges. Uh, there are so many of those around in Missouri. Uh, it's basically a steel or concrete girder that actually supports the concrete floor above it. Um, the second kind, if the span gets longer, then you move to a truss. The truss, once again, is the main supporting structure, and it will actually carry the floor where the traffic drives. Uh, another kind of these bridges, you see a lot of them around Kansas City area, uh, rigid frame bridges. So these here act as piers. Instead of being able to go down, they're actually going to the side of the mountain so that you leave the navigation below the bridge open. Once again, that is similar to the girder bridge, except for longer spans, uh, you make it a rigid frame like that. As the span gets longer, you move into arch bridge, cable stayed, and suspension bridge. Uh, cable stayed or suspension bridge allows you to go real long because most of these members are in tension, and tension is not going to have issues like compression members where buckling becomes an issue. We will talk about that later. Once again, our focus is on truss bridges. Let's talk about truss bridges. As you will see in the other video that you describes the uh, computer software, you will talk about some of these elements. Uh, the first part is the floor, the floor or the deck, that's where the traffic will drive. That deck or floor needs to be supported from underside, underneath it, and these are the blue members, and these are the floor beams. Uh, the software you will use ensures that you must have floor beams. So these blue members here, colored in blue, are the floor beams that will be below the floor or the deck to support the traffic. Because the floor by itself cannot do that. If the span between the floor beams is too long, one way you could do it by adding more floor beams. You can add more joints in the software. Or you can add stringers, which are the green members in here. So you can have stringers running parallel to the traffic. Floor beams are normally running transverse to the traffic. So this is the supporting structure for the floor. All of that is still not sufficient because for the span you're using or you're designing a bridge for, then you must carry it by a supporting structure which is in orange, which is the main supporting part, which is the truss. So the truss will connect to the floor beams at joints right at here. These are the probably the most critical joints in your, uh, in your bridge. So you need to ensure there's sufficient connection between the floor beam and the joint or the bottom core joints of the truss. These joint, that joint, 
and so on. So this truss has members below it, which must be because you can, must create it out of triangles. I will describe later. So once again, the main part is a floor. Floor beams, maybe you will have stringers. And then the joints that make up the truss and the orange lines, which represent the members of the truss. So these are the truss members. You need to add additional members like you see in here for stability for the whole structure. There are other parts for this. So I just ended my previous slide about stability. So when it comes to the bridge uh, design, there are other aspects, but the most important parts are you need to make sure your truss is stable or your whole structure is stable. You also need to make sure the components are stable. So stability is one part. Strength, you need to make sure all the joints, all the members are strong enough to carry the load that's driving or passing over your bridge. Let's talk about stability. Since we're building truss bridges, you need to make sure that all the members, all the joints are part of triangles. Triangles are the most stable shape and uh, circles are but we cannot build out truss and so circles is easier to make it out of triangles so these triangles in either that way but in our case we're all going to be using that because we're going to have members uh, connecting all joints so triangles are making up stable structures and then you add more triangles to build the whole truss this is unstable to make it stable you would have to add a member going between these points so that's one thing. So you need to make sure your truss made out of triangles and every part supporting the stability of the whole structure needs to be out of triangles. Now, when we talk about uh, members themselves, the members can undergo tension or undergo compression. If you watch, or when you watch the other video that talks about, describes the software, you will see that these members will be turning red or blue. So the red members are in compression. Compression members have two issues. Either they're going to break because of the high load on them, which is not probably going to be the critical case. The critical case is going to be that they're going to buckle because of the compression load. So you need to make sure these members are either made shorter because the longer the member, the easier it's going to be to buckle it. The shorter it gets, the harder it gets to buckle the members. So make sure you either make the members shorter by subdividing them, adding more joints, or making them stronger, building them up by making them thicker and thicker as much as needed. So that's for compression members. For tension members, what you need to really worry about is that these members are well connected to the joints because this is one of the most important aspects of you making sure your bridge works together. You need to make sure your bridge is balanced, well designed, so the load path, the load transfers from the floor to the floor beams, to the joints, through the joints, to the truss to carry the load all the way to the abutments, which is the either side of the bridge. So issues to worry about is buckling of the members, compression members, and also the joints. Make sure your joints are strong. Make sure that there is enough transfer of load between the members and the adjacent members through the joints. And the rules describe for you some good ways of creating joints um, in the PDF file of the rules. Here are some examples of common truss designs. As uh, you uh, mentioned earlier, for longer members like in this Pennsylvania design, as you can see, they subdivided it. They added one more joint in here to make this long member to be shorter so it doesn't buckle easy. Same thing as you see in here, same thing. These are all subdivided members to give you uh, more uh, stability for your members individually. So if these members are stable, you need to make sure the whole truss is stable. stable. This is just uh, an idea for some designs, uh, but you can be as creative as you want uh, to come up with an alternative design that will hopefully win the competition. Let's talk about the computer software. And once again, there's a whole video that describes the software, how to download it and how to use it, how to create the joints and uh, describes the floor beams, the floor and the truss and shows you how to run the truck to make sure your members are uh, safe. Once again, the members in red are in compression, so you need to make sure you either strengthen them, make them stronger or subdivide them to be able to reduce the buckling load on them. Uh, once you finish it, and we describe that in detail in the other video, you will be able to get the coordinates of all the points that represent your bridge, so you can translate that to the scaled model. And here's an image of a student uh, translating their design into a drafting paper, um, which we will provide for you. This uh, 
coordinates as we described in the other video uh, were pulled from the software so these are the coordinates of every joint that's in uh, that's going to be used for constructing the bridge if you do use cross members in the software i advise you to actually add another joint in here because you don't want these members running over each other add additional joints as needed like in this i in this example in here so that you can It'll allow you to connect members at that point if you like to if you have a better way of doing it that's all fine too once again you translated the coordinates of all the joints into paper and then drew the members as you designed it in the software for uh, getting ready to uh, start constructing your bridge here's another image of students construct uh, drawing their bridge these team of students they're actually constructing their uh, or actually drawing their bridge uh, trusses because there are two trusses holding the bridge on either side of the floor and they're actually drawing and I uh, recommend you do that draw the bridge the truss twice uh, so you're drawing your truss one truss in here one truss deeper in the sheet and uh, this will allow you to construct one bridge on that and one bridge on that so you don't have to wait for this to dry and move it and possibly will get glued to the paper so you will lose it so I recommend that you draw the trusses both trusses on the paper so you can construct the bridge on either side in addition you should also draw the floor beams on the floor which i will show in future images here's an image where the students have already drawn the two trusses and started cutting their members to size dry no gluing yet these are gusset plates see those need to make sure these are sized well enough so that will allow you room to connect all the members if you look closely at this team these members are coming to this gusset plate these are members of the truss and they left in, leave enough space here because that's where they're going to put their floor beams uh, to connect to the other truss. That's one way of doing it. There are different creative ways that you can use to do. In Not shown in here, these students actually have drawn their floor in here, and uh, which is below what they already started constructing. These are the floor beams and the floor deck is below it. This is upside down. So this floor will actually connect the two trusses together. Once again, the truss was drawn here, another truss was drawn there, and a floor was drawn in here. These floor beams will be the same locations as the joints on the truss, on the bottom of the truss. This team has already started gluing different parts of the, of the bridge, of the truss. Here's a truss going on, and there's another one, and they're getting ready to start constructing their floor using the drawing right below that. This team is already putting some parts together, bridge construction, their members coming together at a gusset joint, and there are other gusset joints that they used. Here we go, this team is building their floor beam, and they're using some clamping devices, uh, like uh, clothespins in here, to be able to hold the glue. One thing you need to remember, too much glue is not good for you. So make sure you be careful how you use the glue in two aspects. One, it might never dry if you have it sealed, if you use too much glue and it gets trapped. And also it will add weight. It will add a lot of weight if you're not careful. So I suggest maybe you do experiments and decide on what's the amount of glue that you should use as you connect members together. Maybe do experiments on the side, connecting uh, scrap uh, balsa wood and watching it how it connects uh, best by deciding what would be the best amount of glue as you connect parts together. This team is uh, using double gussets. There's a gusset plate below and gusset plate above. They're using gussets on both sides to keep the member together. In this location here, they're using one gusset. So it's so again, it's your preference. More gussets, more weight, but maybe it makes it stronger. You have to do a draw line, a balance, and uh, making sure you uh, decide on what's best for you. Here's another team showing their floor beam is already constructed and they're getting ready to start uh, using gusses to put the uh, members together for the truss. This team has already built the floor, built the two trusses. Again, this team is using double gussets. Uh, it's the same as, uh, actually it's a different team in here. And they are uh, putting it all together. So the floor, the trusses, and the floor beams are running underneath that are connected to either side of the truss. This connection between the floor beams and the truss 
is probably the, your most critical connection that you need to make sure is done well. Uh, because the load path, as the truck drives on the truck, on that floor, the floor takes it, and then the floor beams take the load, and the load path travels to either end to these joints and then into the trusses. If the joint between the floor beam and the joint of the truss is not done well, then you do not have a good bridge. Um, let's go to the next slide that shows an end view of one of the bridges. Uh, again, this is two trusses. These are floor beams. Look at the end floor beam in here. This floor beam is connected to the two joints on the truss and it repeats internally. And uh, again, the load will go from the floor to the floor beams to the trusses. So you need the load path to be continuous, not interrupted and strong all the way. Once you do that, once your bridge is ready for testing, as you can see in this image, uh, hope, uh, we hope you all the best. And as you can see in this image, the truck is being pulled using this string into the screen uh, to run the truck all the way to the other end. And we keep adding weights until the bridge fails. Uh, if you look closely in this image, you'll see that this team added, which you also should consider adding uh, braces for the bridge. So these members are connecting the trusses on the top to make sure for structural stability. Make sure you leave enough room for the truck to go through. Read carefully the rules, that opening, that height, what's the minimum height you must have for the truck to pass through. For example, this team couldn't put anything in here because that will interfere with the truck passing by. That's the first point they were able to add these braces laterally to support the trusses in the lateral direction. With that, your bridge will be ready for testing. Good luck. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the spring for the competition.